So when I came in this weekend, I went ahead and uh, pounded in the firewall a little bit in the back here so we could get the downturn from the turbo to clear the firewall and we'd be able to bolt our downpipe up to that. Uh, the more I thought about it, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to cut that uh, downturn that they provide in the kit and rotate it because it's oblong. It's not, it's not round enough to actually cut and move. So while the motor was out, I just took out the opportunity to, to push the firewall in just a hair, just enough to give us the clearance we needed. It's still real tight. I might get an exhaust rattle under acceleration right there if I do. Um, you know, that's, that's life in this case because um, it's just these parts are just not laid out for this car and it's a tight fit and I'm happy to be able to get them to work in the first place. So if I end up with a clearance issue, maybe at some other point I'll, I'll pound it in a little more. But I was a little bit concerned about beating it in too much because the heater box is back there and I didn't want to split it open. So I went with that and uh, called it good and I'm fairly pleased with that. Things never go as planned, of course, and about the time I was ready to start working on the downpipe for the Cabrio, Chris Forrest's Stage 3 kit showed up from APR and I really needed to get that kit on the car and then I could get back to work on the Cabrio afterwards. Fortunately, Drew was still working on the interior, so the project didn't come to a complete halt. Hey Dean, I got your seats. Yeah, that's like perfect color. It turned match. out perfect. Yeah. It turned out perfect. All the naps going the same, you know, so before your shows you'll want to wipe it all down so it's going all, you know. I can write my name in it. Oh yeah, you just look like you vacuum it. I'll bring in the other one. Okay, cool man. I'll get you a check. Oh yeah? Your favorite part. Right on, that's what I came for. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point of come by. Yeah, I guess we're out here today um, taking a look at my 20th anniversary GTI and uh, we've done a little stage 3 kit on it over here from APR. And while doing that, we came into a problem on where to put the boost gauge. We didn't want to put it in the pillar due to the fact there's an airbag in there and the way I drive, you never know. So we talked to Scott Fornson over here and he came up with some creative ideas, which was to tear out the dash and build them all in to the dash. And what I, what I plan on doing is to uh, remove the dash to make it a little bit easier to fab do the fabrication work that I need to do. And uh, the whole overall idea was to keep it kind of with a really factory look, so it looks like it's part of the car original. And uh, I'm going to end up removing the dash and then build a gauge pod that comes off of the factory instrument cluster. It looks like another like smaller factory instrument cluster with the boost gauge and the exhaust gas temperature gauge and then also the air fuel mixture gauge. So it all kind of flow and look all factory like it was meant to be there. The general idea is going to be that it's going to come off of the center of the dash here above the heater vents in the center and that way it'll give it a nice flow across the dash and it'll be a little bit angled towards the driver so it's in their line of sight, easy to see while they're driving. There. Now we have our dash. I'm just glad the airbag stayed in that side of the dash. And if I have any extra, it means I just put the car better together. Together, back together better than the last guy. <laughs> Use less parts. Chris is hardcore driving around without his dash. You know, we might try and coerce him into putting I'll, some suede I'll, on I'm there. I'm going to go over there before I head home. I'll, uh, I, don't, I don't know if suede or leather, because if we did the leather and we did the stitching, like yeah. even like to match the stitching on the steering wheel and like yeah. the e-brake, yeah. that would be sick. And we could, we could do suede too. Leather would be cool too. Leather would be cool too, because there's already a few cars out there with suede, but if we do leather and then do that stitching around that, yeah, the stitching looks cool. that's going to be dope, man. There wouldn't be anything else like that out there.
So that's the dash for the fox. Oh, that's nice. It's a lot better shape than the old one. Well, I sure as hell hope so. Did I tell you how much that thing cost? I meant to bid in dollars. I bid in euros. It was like $300. These are the ones I ripped out. We do a lot of mail order and we bring the products in direct from Germany. This is, allows us to offer some of the best pricing around, but we have to be really careful when we're checking in the orders to make sure nothing arrived broken. We all made it. Nice. The install time on the Stage 3 kit's about 10 hours. It probably took about four times that amount of time to install the kit on the Cabrio. Thankfully, Chris's kit only needed one modification. APRs designed their kit to not really accept aftermarket uh, cold air intakes, but the customer really wanted to use his, so I'm going to have to make some modifications to the kit to work with the intake, but it looks like it's going to be a real basic modification of just using a three inch coupler to a two and a quarter inch coupler. I don't think it's going to be any problem at all. Might even have the one I need in stock. I'm going to glue this air straightener to the housing because the, it attaches to the snorkel usually but since we're doing this uh, install with a cold air intake we're not going to be using that snorkel. So APR really insistent on having the air straightener in there. It's critical the way they've designed the software and the MAF housing so we're going to incorporate it into the uh, cold air intake design. It's so mainly just going to help hold it still because once the silicone coupler's on there, it's not going anywhere anyways because it's a transition coupler. It's going to hold it tight just because of the transition size. Good help is hard to find. <laughs> I'm thinking that they just they've managed to make this thing to where it doesn't take a gasket. It just seems a little bit crazy though. It doesn't show a gasket at all. <clears throat> it doesn't show a gasket in there. Probably gonna leave on Friday. Seriously? Yeah. Is that so bad? I, I really wanted to leave on Thursday this year. I'll have to cut this pipe. So what happens when you start dealing with like three different companies, aftermarket exhaust parts? <laughs> Forget it. Nothing's going to fit. I can tell you that right from the beginning. In this case, we've got APR, Tectonics, and GHL. That will fit like that, though. And that's the important part. Yeah. We'll just need to cut to length. I'll uh, just measure that piece. And... Yeah, just tell me what you cut off of it, and then I'll tell them to put that on file. Okay. Is the Tectonics version of yeah. their downpipe. We were talking, Scott and I, and I know he said he's going to talk to you. What do you think about the whole yeah. leather suede on the dash? I'm down to do it. I think that'd be sick, dude. I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm, thinking, I'm, thinking the, I'm thinking the leather more than the suede, because there's a few Mark IVs with suede dashes. Are there? You'd be the... Yeah. I've seen, not like locally. all that shit. Let me fill it up with those shitty gas stations. <laughs> the real fun part is getting these back on. One ECU. The stock EEPROM, that's a pretty delicate process. You need to be really careful because if uh, one of the 44 individual pads isn't hot enough, you're going to tear the pad, the trace, right off the board, and then you're stuck trying to run a jumper wire from wherever it originated to to wherever it needs to go.
little bit tricky. Hopefully it's good. That's that. You know what? I was all stoked. I thought I was done. I remember I got to put the fucking fuel pump back in the car. Rob, watch for fuel coming out of the fuel injectors. Okay? All right, Chris, go ahead and shut it off. We'll uh, button up the fuel pump, top off the fluids, take it for a test drive.